Worshippers of the Living God Ministry presents Restoring True Worship to God's People from West Palm Beach, Florida with Evangelist and Apostolic Worship Leader the leadership Jacob Tobeck. God we'll bless everyone tonight. It's an honor to be in the presence with those who are being called as priests. Amen. Amen. It's an honor. You can just call us voices in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Heaven cries out, who shall go for us? Where are the prophets? Where are the prophets? Where are my prophets who I've called to uproot, smash down, destroy, and then replant? This is the job of a prophet. To declare the word of the Lord for this minute, for this second, hallelujah. There's got to be a voice of not condemnation but number one of encouragement, of exhortation, of correction, of admonition. These are the licenses that have been given to the almighty priests of God. It is no sin to do the will of God. It is not called judging. It's called a license. If I speed and a policeman stops me, he can give me a ticket. If I open my mouth the wrong way, he has the license to arrest me. You have the license, priests, to encourage, to exhort, to correct, and bring admonition. Where are the voices? The, vo the voices of old who are called would say, but I, I, I can't go, I can't talk. Everyone is a prophet. Every everyone has volunteered for the job. The reason why is because they don't understand yet the job of a prophet. Uh, Lord, I, I can't go. It's not for me. I they knew what the job entailed, didn't they? Zechariah, Isaiah, read the stories. Jeremiah, I can't go, I'm too young. Don't say you can't go or I'll make you a disgrace in front of my people. Moses, you're going to go. No, I can't talk. You will go because right now there's smoke coming from my nose and my nostrils. You will go and speak to those who I tell you to speak to. This is the job of a prophet, to uproot, smash down, destroy, and replant God's kingdom on the face of the earth. It's to undo the works of the devil. Tonight, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jacob, I thought you were going to talk about the passion between the bride and the groom. We are. Hallelujah. Stay here for one second. It's called the warring bride. She knows how to make love at night. But during the day, she must know how. Oh, don't laugh. No. Don't laugh at this because you're going to be tested as soon as these three-day services are over. You will be put to this test of truly what you are in him. She's got to know how to make love at night, but she's got to know how to use the sword to decapitate everything that exalts itself against the truth. And after she decapitates it, she has to learn how to go to lunch immediately and smile. <laughs> she smiles now, but when she was put to the test, she was crying. Yes. There's going to be a process. I'm just letting you know, as my brothers and sisters, because we didn't escape it, and you're not going to escape it. Hallelujah. It has to do with passion 
For who? Her lover. The one who she's in love with. That's her husband sitting next to the father. She's in love with him. She married me. This was a supernatural happening, which I will take a couple of minutes to tell you. So this is why we speak in confidence. But I'm her second and third or fifth or back, whatever you want to call it. I get the crumbs after she's through with her husband. But when she is with her first husband, the crumbs that he gives me is better than any man could ask of a woman. She doesn't share me with Yahshua. That's her dedication. That's her love. She's not to be disturbed in that prayer closet by a husband who calls and says, Honey, I'm waiting in the bedroom. No, I'm sorry, honey. I'm with my first husband, and he's the one I'm going to stay with until I'm finished. Oh, eventually I won't do that anymore. This is called dedication. Unless you can love me more, says the Lord, than father mother, sister, brother, husband, wife. You are not worthy of me, says the Lord. When my brother got married to my sister here, he was looking for certain traits that caused him to fall in love with her. Isn't that true, Pastor? Tell me why, tell me the traits that caused you to be attracted to her and fall in love with her. What were the traits? See, he's made in the likeness of God. So perhaps maybe we'll understand a little more as God speaks. Tell us what caused you to fall in love with her. One of them was she was in Hold on, can, he, can, can you pick him up? Okay, good. One of them was she was in the church. She was reared up and brought up to love God. Praise God. In other words, to rephrase it, it's not that she was brought up in the church. She was brought up with God. That's what you really mean. Yes? Yes. yes. Let's, let, let's, let's be very specific on that. You, you, you like the smell of godliness in her. Yes? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The smell of godliness. Mm. Mm. What was the second trait? The second trait was that she came from a godly home. Mm, still godliness, God smell. Go ahead, what else? And she was beautiful. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. Mm, yes. beautiful, beautiful, yes. Was there another trait that she had that seemed to have attracted you, you, you know, you to her that was like, you know, I know it's attractiveness, and we went for the beauty and all that stuff, right? Uh, we did one more thing. She loved me. Ah! Ah! Ooh. We men just can't resist that, can we? Can we? You get so quiet with the men. Men don't talk. You see what I mean? But I know, because I'm a man, number one, number two, I talk to men. We love brides who love us. As a matter of fact, a year and a half ago, I'm going to take two minutes. This is important for this. So what does this have? Oh, it has to do with everything. A year and a half ago, I get a call. It probably was about the 25th thousand call about a woman who wanted to learn about worship. I heard about this. You want to learn? I says, you want to learn? Okay, then you're going to buy the books, the free books, the tapes, and this and that if you want to. She says, okay. I says, well, this is what it's going to cost. She says, okay, we want to pay for it. Boom, we send it out. And then she calls me a month later. Well, I, and if I miss a couple of quotations, but I'm just going to bring up quickly. She says, well, I want to teach. I says, you want to teach this? 
I says, you don't know what it's involved. They says, well, I want to teach it. She says, okay, well, I'll tell you what then. Are you praying? Well, I'm praying a little. I says, you can't teach this unless you get a prayer life. You're praying an hour a day, that's all? Please, go back and start, get a prayer life for you. And, and work it up slowly. But get it up to at least a tenth of a day. Do, do, you, do you fast? Well, yeah, how much? One, maybe one day? Well, I, I used to fast a lot. Used to? You used to fast? You want to be a, a worship leader now? You want to teach worship and you're telling me that you don't, you used to? I says, it's now. It's not, I don't want to hear worse. I really was tough on her. Why? Because I had so many people calling me, wanting not only, but I want to teach this. And that's why I got to the point where I'd get rid of them. He was and trying to get rid of it. I was trying to get rid of it because I, <laughs> and I did everything. So now she says, okay. Oh, we'll start with that. She calls me a month later. Well, I, I'm in it. I'm doing it. You are? And she kept calling me, learning this, wanting to know, what do I do here? She wanted to learn. She knew. You see, the woman that you're lucky, and I'm boasting on her. She's my wife. She's smart. She knows when God is bringing something down from heaven. This is a very rare quality because I find that the body of Yahshua, Jesus, is asleep. Be angry with me, those who are watching this broadcast, but they don't understand. They don't see God when he comes and visits. It's not any different than when Yahshua came. They didn't recognize me on the day of visitation. And naturally, if they couldn't recognize the Son of God right in the flesh, how are they ever going to recognize the thing that God is doing? But she did. She grabbed this thing like nobody did. Every little thing she sucked out of me. How do you do this? Why do you do this? She learned the prayer. She opened the book. She learned every prayer in that book. And then she... And then we were having a conversation one day, and she, and, and she talked about something like marriage. You know, not that with me. And it just, I says, marriage? I says, we, if you want to teach worship, your mind can't be on marriage right now. You're going to find a guy. You're going to get hooked up with him, and that's the end of that. And then I, I said, what do you want to get married for? And she said, well, I want to cuddle. <laughs> and and I, I said, well, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But the point is, look, I just want to let you know that I'm not interested in marriage, okay? Not that she ever said anything like that, but I really, I didn't want to be involved in marriage. At this point in my life, I've spent too much time seeking God, and I, marriage is a, not an easy thing. Then all of a sudden now, and she said, and as far as she's concerned, she wasn't interested in me anyway. A a as a matter of fact, um, one day, this is like a year and a quarter ago, see, worship brings miracles. This is the miracle, not about really me, but when God talks. He says, he's going to be your husband. Now, when she told me this, I listened to this, I believed her. But when I went to a journal and I saw it written in a year ago, no, I never told you. I, Father said he would tell you. Oh, so I right. never told you. I had it in my prayer journal. It was in the journal, and I saw it myself a year ago. Okay, God spoke and said, he's going to be a, she says, but I don't like him. I don't, I'm attracted to him. He's nasty, and he's everything, which really, I tell you, come. And that was it. But this is the miracle, and this is why I want to let you know you're going to receive tonight again. This is a no effort. This is a no effort, okay? A no effort thing. You're going to receive. You got pregnant last night, and you're going to get pregnant again tonight. Oh, no. It's true. It's true. So now what happens is I know nothing of this, and for a straight year, uh, she comes down. There was a worship gathering. She said, I'm going to come down. I want to get anointed. She comes down, and the pastor who married this, you know, I didn't know nothing. At the end of the service, she turns around and says to me, she's going to probably be your des best disciple. And she laughed and walked away. And I just thought it meant, in other words, someone who learned. Sure enough, in last June, just, I mean, I'm going to get right to the point. All of a sudden, my eyes open. And I just, as we're holding hands, say, said, dear, dear, we're not friends. We're not ministry partners. Because she had come down and started helping me at the ministry partners. I mean, I just couldn't resist this one. This one it was just like helping me and loving me. There you go, loving me, loving me, loving me to death. 
I couldn't resist it, okay? But, and again, the point is that my eyes open. I fell in love with it, but I, I said, no, hold on for a second. I love you, I'm attracted to you, but I can't marry you. I don't want to give up Yahshua. I don't want to have to split time with you. I, I, I don't want to have to, I, I don't want to split time from Yahshua. I can't, I'm not going to be happy, and I don't want to make her unhappy. And she looked at me, and I said, but I'm going to go pray, and she says, go pray. See, she already knew what Yeshua was saying. Yahweh, she, it was a done deal as far, he, she said, yeah, you go pray. So I'm in there praying for two days, and, and, and nothing was happening. All of a sudden, he tells me, I want you to tell her you want to marry. Now, again, let me make this clear. I was attracted to her, and I was in love with her. But I what, didn't want to, I was afraid to lose my time with the father and the son. I, you know the, the, the father gives us these deals once in a while. I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you get married because you've been serving me good. But you understand you're going to have to give up time with me. You know those things that come once in a while. No, I can't give up any time with him. He tells me, tell her you want to marry her. So I said, let me get back into prayer because I thought I was talking to myself. So I go back, he says, I want to marry, I want you to tell her to marry her. I says, well, I'm getting nervous now because I'm here in the Father. And I says, well, then let me take my communion again. So he says, no, now. So I run, and that was the end of that. I mean, I was totally, I mean, this is, the reason he brought us together was because he wants to restore the worship to the face of the earth. I've done this, ministered for 29 years alone. 13 years is the worship. 13 years I spent in this subject only. This is all he has the last 13 years. But now that I'm unraveling it, he said, he's showing me, how in the world are you ever going to bring the bride and the groom when you don't know what it is to truly know what marriage is? Amen. So this is the whole thing now I'm realizing. He had to show, he had to get me in the experience of being married to know when I feel rejected, how I feel, to explain it to the bride so that we can start understanding what he wants from us and vice versa. So she's teaching me, I'm teaching her, and all I can tell you is that this one mm. I love. And mm. I'm going to tell you another thing. Mm. Our arrangement is she takes the crumbs, I take the crumbs, and we're perfectly happy. You see, this is the miracle. She has never taken me out of the prayer closet. I never took her out. And I'm telling you, we have more in the God, what God has given us than oh, I know. And I, I just want to give him praise. And This is a praise and honor glory. And we thank you, Father, thank Yahshua, you, Father. Holy Spirit. We want to testify of what God has done thank miracularly. You. This is what happens in worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. The issue of this whole entire planet is worship. It started in heaven, the audacity of an angelic being to come before the throne of God and demand worship in the throne. This is the enemy. This is the enemy, Satan himself and every demonic spirit. This is the enemy that you're up against. I know we recite, oh, we've got the devil under us. It's called restoring apostolic foundations to the church. Yes, those scriptures work well when you are living in apostolic foundation. But when you are not, we're just repeating nice words. So we're going to need a quick work, aren't we? Because this is the bottom line spiritually. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Now understand, when I leave here, we go home in that car together. We get home, we hug, we kiss, we lay down. But ultimately, I lay next, I'm in the arms of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and so is she. And we have to rehearse what was said. So what I say, I understand Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are speaking right now, so I'm responsible. The war started in heaven. He was kicked out of heaven, took control of the earth, and has taken control of the earth. Those of us who are children of God are born from above, and we're here to undo the works of the devil. Yes? yes. When, when, when Yahshua came to the earth, 
the very first thing that Satan wanted again was adultery by the Son of God. He went right after the Son of God immediately and said, I will give you everything if you'll just do one thing, and that's fall down before me. Remember that. That's what he wanted. Fall down before me. Just this little thing. But God knows, Yahshua knows, the Holy Spirit knows, and all heaven knows that the highest form of honoring is worship. True worship. This is... This is the highest thing in the universe. Of course, Yahshua said, get behind me, Satan. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall you serve. Circle the word worship. Again, we reviewed this yesterday. The word is proscunio. It's in your strong's concordance. It says to lick like a dog, licking his masters, pastors, bishops, apostles, worship leaders, lick like a dog, licking his master's hand, bow, kneel, prostrate. No standing, no sitting, and no singing. Yet that's exactly what is going on in the churches during what we call worship. You have signs on your buildings, this is the worship center. Worship service starts at what time? No. You don't have worship you have singing, you have praise. Praise is honoring God for what he's done. done. But that's done on the outer court. The praise is great. But you have, we have no worship in the church today, except for maybe a very few who've learned the worship. Hmm? But in most churches you walk, and this goes from the biggest church in the country, I don't care. It doesn't matter whether you have a church of 20. You can take this recording and send it out to every pastor. I'd be glad to meet 25,000 worship leaders, and I'll come by myself. Excuse me. I'll come with my bride, and I'll be glad to explain why they do not understand what worship is. The definition, once and for all, according to Yahweh, Yahshua, and the Holy Spirit, is bow, kneel, and prostrate oneself before God in the beauty of holiness. This is the definition of worship. There hasn't hardly been anyone to dispute this because it's the word. The problem is we are not yielding to the truth. Once you learn truth and you disobey it, it's called stubbornness. Stubbornness is the sin of idolatry. Pastors, bishops, apostles, believers. Are you a Saul or are you a David? You'll find out tonight. Stubbornness is when you don't want to budge from your position because you like your tradition. I like that. Stubbornness is... What did I just say? <laughs> when you like your tradition. No, I like the rhyme. What did I just say? Stubbornness. Is when you do not want to budge from your position because of tradition. Yes, stubborn. Remember that one. Stubbornness is, is, is when you don't want to budge from your position because of your tradition. He told again the Pharisees and the Sadducees, your traditions have made the word of God of no effect. You have completely stripped the word because you want to keep your traditions. And that's what the leaders of the body of Yahshua have done. They've made a decision. We're not doing it. Father is very, very patient. He is very, very patient. He's raised you up. He's blessed you in paneled houses. Mm -hmm. yes. But there's spankings coming from Father. Because not only are you not yielding leaders, but you're causing your flocks. Yeah. The blind will lead the blind. Yeah. And both. It is a serious thing when one refuses to worship the one and true God, Yahweh. 
back to the problem. We are in the mother load of the problem right now. What's the problem, Jacob? Did you read Revelations? There's going to be a story that's going to be coming, and we're right in the middle of it. It seems that Satan is going to come now in the form of a, uh, what is it? What does he call Antichrist. And he's going to want all the earth to bow down to him. Mm. Here we go. You see, the war is going to be over the worship. I did not come to bring peace like you thought. It's all right to love, but make sure you don't love too much. Hmm. All the love first has to be accentuated in them first. After we accentuate our love and separate from you, humans will bring us back to the people so that our love can be pure in the right way. God isn't expecting us to be humanitarians. That means so goodly to all human beings. He wants us to have godliness. There's a difference. Mm. He's after the worship and you're touching it. You're marked. You're marked. Or you don't believe in powers, principalities, and wicked spirits in high places. That's why we have to get seriously quickly. The charge that's being given to you, man and woman, what I meant was I want to protect her and us. I want to make sure that you understand what the charge is because I don't want to ever come back and you come back crying to me. I mean, I'm doing this for me because I don't want the blood to be in my hands. You've been crying out you want the glory. Yes? God came to you and said, I'll give you the glory. Just offer for the worship. You called me, you told me. The reason why I'm speaking about this publicly is because every one of you are responsible for this message. Every one of you are to get around these two and, and safeguard the sanctuary. Go to Malachi. It says that the job of the priest is, number one, people should come to them for truth. Number two, they're the mouthpieces. They're the messengers of God. They speak truth for God, and they're supposed to safeguard the sanctuaries. Now, who does this sanctuary belong to? Yes, unless pastor and Mrs. Pastor decide to take control of it, then, which they're not. Hallelujah. Amen. He doesn't want it. Pray, you guys. Smart. Yes. <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, you must guard them. Mrs. Pastor must guard her husband. Yes, you must keep a watchful eye. Why? Because you're going to be tested. You're no different than me, and you're no different than the one on the floor over here. He's got to test you and see if the... Well, what do you mean? Well, it could be possible that after we leave, you'll get a call in six months or five months, or maybe four months, from a famous, famous pastor. Maybe the second biggest in the country hearing what's going on here. There's something going on here. People are walking in. The presence of God is here. Why? Oh, you, because you laid up the worship. It's no mystery. When you lay the worship up, the power will come every time. It's going to come again. God, Yahweh Yahshua, will confirm again this message tonight, but even more intensely, because he wants everybody to understand it's his work. It has nothing to do with Jacob and Lorianne. We're mouths and we're, we're voices. And you're excited. Everybody gets excited when a famous person with credentials comes. It's natural. But you're going to be weary and walk slowly. Signs and wonders are coming to the place. Wow, do you realize what this is going to do for this church? It's going to quadruple it. We're natural. It's great to get excited. But something very may unusual happen. We're all excited, and all of a sudden, it's Friday night, and he walks in. And there Kim is at the door with a bottle of oil. Now, you know that everybody gets anointed with oil when they walk in from this day on, because that oil may save your life one day. 
man of God, woman of God, things are changing. Please, I'm begging you to listen. This woman will tell you, we've had visits. I'm saying to you, and I'm begging you to listen. Satan has an interest in you. He wants to shut your mouth. He wants to shut your mouth. You know too much and it's only one service. So the person comes in and says, that's okay. I'm already anointed. Oh, and that's okay. I don't have to take my, I don't, I don't take my shoes off. I'm so-and-so, you know that. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Your first loyalty is to Yahweh, Yahshua, and the Holy Spirit. It started here last night. It will continue tonight and go to tomorrow night. Yahweh, Yahshua, and the Holy Spirit are planting. If you don't know what's going on, I'll be very specific. He is giving the blueprint here for every church in the country the way he wants a sanctuary set up according to the word of God. This is going to be a model. This is the focus. This is the focus. The kingdom of heaven is not a democracy. A king is not a democracy. It's his way or no way. Yes? We don't have the churches to please people. The churches are to please God. When you please God, eventually everyone's going to be pleased. When everyone starts getting blessed, when all the anxiety leaves, when all the depression leaves, when all the problems leave. But understand the charge. The charge is worship. I'll bring the glory if you give me the worship. That was the agreement you made with him. It's not to be compromised with any body, any flesh. Remember, all flesh is his grass, and its glory will wither, just like the flowers in the field. But the word of the Lord shall stand forever. It says in Chronicles, the first thing that David did when he became king, and this is what it says. He says, I think it's a good idea to return the Ark of the Covenant into Israel, not like the days of Saul, he says. The true love of God is that we obey his commandments. <laughs> what is it that he wants from you that you are not giving? He wants to become one with you. He's looking in something that he, you're not giving him. Do you know that he desires you? Did you know that? How do you know? Because the temple was rent. The minute his son gave up the Holy Spirit, the temple was rent, which said, come to me. But you don't. You don't. The Martha and the Mary, he tells you what he wants. Martha was busy serving. Ah, serving is godly, isn't it? Yes? Mary. Oh, listen to this. This is the heart of this whole thing, was right at his feet. We have the Martha serving, 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 serving humanity, serving people, serving this, serving that. And we have the Mary from the outside look like she's doing nothing. She's sitting at his feet. The one who's serving gets restless and says, Lord, I'm doing all the work around here. I'm building the churches. I'm taking care of this. I'm taking care of that. I'm, and this one, all she is is sitting at her feet doing nothing. 
the Lord says to her, Martha, Martha, Martha. God forbid any of us should be Martha's. You are so busy. 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 With the cares of the world. What Mary has chosen is the one and only thing needful. Is the one thing that's needful. It will not be taken away from her. Luke chapter 7 verse 37. And behold a woman. A woman. It's always a woman. A man who God raises up. It's not somebody famous. It's a woman, a David, a David of a nothing. Oh, I don't have any more sons. Oh, wait a minute, I do have another son. He's out in the field. I forgot about him. He sounds like he's really a member of that family, isn't it? The reason why David was so close to God is he didn't have anybody else. He had to go to God. That's the advantage of being isolated. You don't have anybody else to lean on. You come so close to him that she can't break you apart. He says he entrusted himself to no man Amen. because he knew what was in man. She only entrusts herself to Yahshua. She loves me, but she knows she can't entrust herself to me because she knows what's in man. Man will always disappoint her. You know, hey, I don't care how perfect. They're always going to disappoint. A human. He entrusted himself to no man because he knew what was in man. We love, but entrust means something completely different, doesn't it? Entrust. Yes. Is this Jacob's philosophy? No. Yahshua said that. And it turned out right, didn't it? It seems all those ones who loved him left him. <laughs> he always knows, right? Yes, he does. Mm. Always. Always. Always, Lord. You always know how to protect your people. And behold, the one of the town was an especially wicked sinner. Especially. She's an especially wicked sinner. Not a sinner. Especially. <laughs> anyway. Probably the prostitute of the town, the long hair. The whole thing, right? Yep. Somebody you and I wouldn't even want to get in contact with or mix with. When she learned that he was reclining at the table at the Pharisee's house, who was reclining? No flesh shall stand in your presence. And you 